I'll be real with you guys, I really don't know much about SpongeBob SquarePants. The show became wildly popular when I was a bit older and wasn't into cartoons and stuff as much, but it seems like the people that are in their mid-twenties now were really the main target with that show. I've always heard though that SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was a really good 3D platformer during a time when 3D platformers were kind of being phased out. So when SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was announced as coming to all modern platforms with an HD remaster of the original game, I thought it might be kind of cool to check it out. I enjoy 3D platformers. The game is a budget game at just $29.99, so it seemed like it would be a winner. But there's some issues with this game, specifically the Nintendo Switch version of this game, and you need to be aware of these issues before you visit this pineapple under the sea, and it actually kind of brings about something in the video game industry that I want to rant about a little bit. A review with the mini RGT rant in it. Yep, we're going there. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's go to the pineapple under the sea and talk about Spongebob Squarepants on the Nintendo Switch. The story of Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated obviously isn't a classic deep narrative, but it is put together better than something like The Last of Us 2. But um. Plankton, who owns the Chum Bucket, basically creates a machine that creates robots in order to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula, thus putting all of those chicks on your Facebook page who still have the Krusty Krab as their job on the unemployment line. Seriously, what's, what's up with that? You're like 30, change that already. Unfortunately, Plankton forgets to turn off the switch that makes the robots obey him, so they run rampant through Bikini Bottom, which is where SpongeBob lives. Plankton basically lies to Spongebob in order to get him to help get him back into the chum bucket, and Spongebob must go throughout the world collecting golden spatulas, essentially the stars from Super Mario 64, and get rid of this robot invasion. I actually watched an episode of the Spongebob show in order to sort of get an understanding of this world previous to playing the game, and somehow all this made sense to me, and like I said, way more cohesive than The Last of Us 2's story. Now I usually start things off by talking about the gameplay for a game in my reviews, but not in this review, because like I said, we have some problems here with the Nintendo Switch version of the game, and this is kind of where I get into the rant portion of this video as well. The graphics in this game are not very good at all. Now the character models themselves are fine for everyone, including the enemies, but the Nintendo Switch version of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is riddled with graphical issues. Textures sometimes don't load at all, shadows and enemies appear and disappear in the background at will, and there's just so much pop-up in this game it is extremely noticeable. The frame rate is also all over the place too with this game, and you can almost guess when it's going to impact a level based on what kind of level it is. If it's an indoors level, a bit of a smaller level, the level will probably be fine and rather smooth, but the larger outdoor levels, including the first level you play in the game, feel like you are bogged down in mud moving through them. Now, talking to some SpongeBob experts, which, yes, there are those, the game is designed to be a slower paced 3D platformer, which is fine with me. But when the frame rate varies so heavily from level to level, you struggle to get a real good feel for the game. Like I said, the indoor levels feel a lot better than the more open levels, but you're constantly shifting between these two types of levels all throughout the game. And here is where the rant portion of this video really kicks off because allegedly the developers are aware of these issues, and there is a day one patch coming to SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated for the Nintendo Switch, but really that's still a problem to me. Reviews such as this one go up before the game launches, which means that if you get a review copy of a game like I did, this is the version you are playing and expected to review. I'm not sure if this is a Nintendo issue or an industry-wide issue, but I feel like if there is a patch that is ready to go for the game, the patch should be released when the review copies are available. How many of these issues are going to be fixed with this patch? Will the frame rate be smooth across all the levels? Will the graphics have substantially better draw distance and less pop-up? Will textures load properly? I mean, who knows? It is a frustrating part of the video game industry when games are released with day one patches, because everyone who is reviewing this game will experience something that could be different than what the average consumer gets. Okay, okay, rant over, now let's get back to the actual game. 
Now, as mixed of a bag as the graphics and the frame rate are with SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, the audio design in this game is just absolutely top notch. Very whimsical music from the show along with original scores are littered throughout the game, and the characters are also fully voiced as well, adding a nice layer of audio presentation to this game. There's lots of little cool sound effects such as a classic sneaking noise when you have to sneak as Spongebob and these things are all throughout this game as you're playing them. And although some of the one-liners do get a bit redundant after hearing them over and over again, I thought the audio in this game was just fantastic all around. And the gameplay is good too for the most part with a few exceptions. As you can tell from the gameplay that you've been seeing throughout this video, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is essentially a collect-a-thon 3D platformer in which you play as three characters from the show, SpongeBob himself, Patrick, and Sandy. The main goal in the game is to collect the golden spatulas which are within the levels, and this is done by completing missions within these levels. The more spatulas you get, the more areas you can access in the game. Aside from collecting the golden spatulas, you can also find hidden socks within the levels that belong to Patrick, and shiny objects which you get by clearing out enemies that sort of act as a currency in the game to access certain areas or can be used to buy additional golden spatulas from Mr. Krabs. Each character definitely feels way different than the other character, and it has advantages over one another, but the game has you mostly playing as a certain character at a certain time based on the portion of the level that you are in. You'll encounter spots on the map that are bus stations that allow you to switch characters, and most of the time that certain character is needed in order to progress throughout this level. SpongeBob can do things like sneak on his tiptoes in order to avoid certain robots, Patrick can throw fruit to hit faraway targets, and Sandy has a lasso that can grip onto things and swing across larger areas. The levels themselves seem to be based on popular locations from the show, but as someone who isn't well versed in the show, I can't say that for sure, but I will say that they are pretty creative. You will encounter other characters along the way from the show as well. You run, you jump, you platform, you solve puzzles, pretty basic stuff for a 3D platformer, but I did find some of the levels to be very creative and interesting, along with the puzzles themselves. Now like I said, for the most part it's a pretty good experience, but there are a few things I did encounter that hampered the experience just a bit. The first thing isn't a major deal, but was annoying at times to me, and that's when you get hit, you definitely fly back quite a bit, and it can be very unpredictable, especially when you're scaling a large level and get thrust down to the bottom of this level. But the real problem I had with the gameplay was with glitches, as this game had a lot of them as I was playing. One time I jumped and got stuck as Spongebob and he was just in this weird position and the camera got all crazy with it too and I couldn't move. One time I jumped on a platform, I landed on the platform and I immediately died and I could not figure out why as it seemed to just be a normal platform. After exploring the area a bit more, I decided that I had no other way to go and jumped on the platform again and this time I, I was fine, Noth nothing happened, I didn't die. During one of the more intricate puzzles in the game that has you rolling a ball through a maze, the ball has to go into a catapult in order to be thrown across to another section of this maze. I put the ball in the catapult and it sat there, and it sat there, and it sat there. It did nothing! Why is it not doing anything? I literally had to jump off the map and die in order for the puzzle to reset so I could try it again. Now once again, are all of these glitches going to be addressed in the holier than thou day one patch for SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated on the Nintendo Switch? I mean, they very well could be, but who was really to say? Now I know it sounds like I might be being a bit too harsh on this game, but really I didn't hate the whole game experience or anything like that. The game doesn't overstay its welcome, with the main game lasting around 7 to 9 hours or so, with added incentive for collectathon fans to go back and find every spatula and sock as you don't need them in order to finish the game. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was honestly just a bit frustrating to me, as we've gotten so many great 3D platformers on the Nintendo Switch, and this should have been yet another one, but as it stands right now there are some major issues that impact this game. If these issues are ironed out in the patch that comes out, that's awesome and I hope it does, as this game will end up being a pretty solid budget 3D platformer at just $29.99 for the Nintendo Switch. It's just very annoying that this day one patch is even needed in the first place though, because I know for a fact that the Xbox One version of this game doesn't have any of these issues because I have re friends reviewing that version of the game, with some of those reviews probably already being up. 
So was the Nintendo Switch version of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated just an afterthought with this game? I don't know for sure, but honestly, it sort of seems like it was. So there we go. That was my experience with SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated on the Nintendo Switch. Like I said, if they could fix these graphical issues, if they could fix these frame rate issues, and of course the glitches that you do encounter in the game, I think this would be a really solid budget 3D platformer. I don't think it's one of the greatest 3D platformers or anything. It's definitely not a great game, but I think it's good. But as it stands right now, the version I played of this game was just mediocre to me. I just felt like there was way too many graphical issues, way too many gameplay issues and that unstable frame rate just never really helped me get into a groove with this game and I think that's a big problem with it I really do feel like the Nintendo Switch version of this game was just sort of an afterthought with this game and it's a shame because I think this game will probably sell best on the Nintendo Switch which is really where the time and resources should have went into the development of this version of the game so honestly I walked away from this game a bit disappointed but hopefully this day one patch does come out and it fixes a lot of these problems because I think under all of this, there is a solid 3D platformer in this game. So let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this game. Do you have fond memories of playing this game back when it first came out, of course, on the GameCube and systems like that? Have you been looking forward to this version of the game? And are you thinking about getting the Nintendo Switch version or maybe the PS4 or the Xbox One version since those do seem to be a bit more stable right now? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel don't say I don't review games that I'm not necessarily interested in because I never thought I would review a Spongebob game but here we are 2020 is just a wild wild year and as always I'll catch you guys on the next video later